All right, so let's introduce the topic of liver cirrhosis. This is something that you'll see relatively commonly in clinical practice. So these concepts are important. So cirrhosis refers to a late stage of scarring or fibrosis in the liver with a number of different causes, basically anything that causes chronic liver injury, including chronic alcohol use, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, viral hepatitis, etc. As the liver gets injured over time, two important things happen. One, the liver tries to compensate, forming regenerative nodules. And two, there is collagen deposition that leads to liver fibrosis. As a result, when cirrhosis is advanced, you're gonna see some pretty specific imaging features that you need to know. The first is surface nodularity that is caused by the formation of regenerative nodules and alternating areas of fibrosis. So this is a cirrhotic liver with frank surface nodularity all the way around. Normally the liver surface is very smooth. Second, fibrosis leads to atrophy of liver tissue or shrinking of liver tissue. So late in cirrhosis, sometimes the entire liver is diffusely atrophied or shrunken as a result. And this is usually very obvious. But more importantly, earlier on in cirrhosis, certain areas of the liver can atrophy and others are gonna end up hypertrophying or growing to compensate. And this leads to what we call low bar redistribution. And the pattern can depend somewhat on the cause of cirrhosis, but to simplify, most commonly you're gonna see right lobe atrophy and hypertrophy of the caudate and left lateral segment. You can visually pick this up based on the appearance. Uh, it's gonna look like this picture here with hypertrophy of the caudate lobe and the left lateral segments and atrophy of the right lobe here. But some people have also tried to use measurements and ratios, most commonly or most classically Harbin's ratio, which looks at the caudate to right lobe ratio. As the caudate grows and the right lobe atrophies, of course, the caudate to right lobe ratio should go up. There are associated cutoffs that you can look at depending on the ratio you're using or how you measured it. But for the original Harbin's ratio, greater than 0.65 was considered abnormal and pretty accurate for determining if there was cirrhosis present or not. So if you take one thing away from this, when you're looking at the liver on CT routinely, you wanna recognize if there is frank surface nodularity and if there is apparent low bar redistribution. Another thing that you can pick up on CT is evidence of portal hypertension or an elevated blood pressure in the portal venous system. As you likely know, there are a bunch of causes of portal hypertension, but you most commonly see this in cirrhosis. As the liver becomes more fibrotic in cirrhosis, resistance to blood flow increases, and the pressure in the portal vein also increases, i.e. portal hypertension. On CT, you're gonna see sequelae of portal hypertension in these cases. One is portosystemic collaterals. As the pressure builds up in the portal venous system, it can decompress into the systemic venous system via connections between the portal and systemic systems, aka portosystemic collaterals. You will commonly see, for example, recanalization of the paraumbilical veins, like you do here, that extend or go down towards the umbilicus. Recanalization of the paraumbilical vein, you'll notice it's filled with contrast here, in the back of the falciform is pathognomonic for portal hypertension. You can also see esophageal slash paraesophageal varices like you do here in this case, gastric varices as well. And gastric and esophageal varices usually come, uh, at least on this side of the, the stomach, from 
the left gastric vein as they do here. And you can also see various types of shunting. So in this case, you have some splenic varices over here that drain into the renal vein. So this is the renal vein here on the left. And you can see that the splenic varices are draining into it. So this is a splenorenal shunt. So these varices and shunts are worth mentioning um, as they are associated with worse clinical outcomes. Other imaging findings of portal hypertension that are worth noting uh, include splenomegaly, so the spleen usually measuring over 13 centimeters, and ascites, which is free intraperitoneal fluid. So again, these are things that you may recognize and things that we most commonly see in patients with cirrhosis. Okay, so there are a few mimics of the classic signs of cirrhosis that I think are worth briefly mentioning. Not all liver nodularity is cirrhosis, though it is by far the most common thing that causes it. Pseudocirrhosis here on the left is a pattern seen in the liver in some patients with metastatic disease to the liver, most commonly seen after treatment and most frequently or most classically described in breast cancer. So what happens is you have scarring that is related to a metastatic lesion or multiple metastatic lesions in the liver. And this can happen pre-treatment or more commonly post-treatment. And this can make the liver look nodular, just like cirrhosis. So this is a case of a patient who had breast cancer and uh, had treated metastases in the liver with a pseudocirrhotic pattern. But also note that usually you're going to be looking at this particular liver, for example, in the context of a patient with a known cancer with known metastases that were treated. Diaphragmatic slips are normal bundles of diaphragm muscle that can, that can be prominent in some patients and can mimic nodularity in some patients as well. So these arrows here are pointing to prominent diaphragmatic slips that make the, the surface of the liver look uh, nodular, but that's not actual nodularity of the liver. That's related to the diaphragmatic slip, so that can be a pitfall on CT if you're not aware of them. There are a few other processes that I won't touch on that can mimic surface nodularity uh, that you see in cirrhosis, um, but they're pretty rare and out of scope here, so I think we'll stop there for this topic. I think for now, if you're starting out, it's better to think that in most cases, frank surface nodularity is hepatic cirrhosis until proven otherwise. The last background liver finding on CT that I think is worth mentioning is this because it's pathognomonic. This is a post-contrast acquisition. You'll notice that there are all these high attenuation linear findings here in the liver that are relatively peripheral. And here's the non-contrast acquisition in this same patient. And you'll notice that all of these that we were looking at uh, were in fact calcifications. So this is called the turtle back liver sign, or it's, it's called turtle back liver. And this is uh, classically seen in schistosomiasis. As a bit of background, schistosomiasis is a parasitic infection that's actually pretty common worldwide, especially in Africa. It's less common in Canada and the US. Uh, schistosomiasis affects a bunch of body systems, but in the liver, you get deposition of small eggs around the portal vein that leads to periportal fibrosis or fibrosis around the portal veins and eventually cirrhosis. So it's actually one of the more common causes of cirrhosis worldwide. The two most common species of schisto that affect the liver are schistosomiasis mansoni and schistosomiasis japonicum. The eggs that get deposited in the liver are bigger in Mansoni, so they're usually deposited along the larger portal veins. And in Japonicum, they are smaller, the eggs are smaller, so they generally affect the smaller, more peripheral portal veins. So the pattern I'm showing here in these images of turtleback liver refers to this pattern of calcified septa and fibrosis peripherally. 
and this is pathognomonic for schistosomiasis japonicum. With Mansoni, you generally get more central periportal fibrosis, and calcification is not common with Mansoni. If that's too much, just remember that this appearance is pathognomonic for schistosomiasis. Schisto is something that you may see relatively commonly in clinical practice, depending where you practice in the world. So I thought it was worth briefly touching on. In the next video, we will introduce the topic of a very heterogeneous modeled nutmeg type appearance of the background liver and the associated pathologies that is passive hepatic congestion, Bud Chiari and SOS. So stay tuned for that. We'll then wrap up background liver and move on to focal liver lesions. Okay, thanks a lot.